Thank you. At the request of the commission for advice and an opinion on certain aspects of potential testimony to be heard today, the law department did provide a letter dated June 2nd, 2009 from Lawrence H. Baumiller, Assistant City Solicitor, to Renell Watson, Chairwoman Planning Commission. The subject matter of the letter is the Planning Commission's, <coughs> excuse me, scope of review of the project development plans and master development plans. Dear Ms. Watson, we received your request last week for an opinion regarding what the Planning Commission may consider when reviewing proposed project development plans, which are referred to in the letter as PDPs, and master development plans, which are referred to in the letter as MDPs. <coughs> the Planning Commission must consider only the criteria set forth in the Pittsburgh Code and should not consider criteria outside of that limited scope. Pittsburgh Code Section 922 Point ten, point D, point two, which is attached to the letter as Exhibit A, and I will not read the exhibits, sets forth the specific criteria that the Planning Commission must consider when reviewing an MDP. The six criteria set forth in the code relate to the functionality and attractiveness of the development, the general environmental, social, and economic impact the development on the city, the effect of the development on property values nearby, the available utilities and other facilities, ingress, egress, and traffic congestion, and to whether the proposed development complies with any plans or policy documents adopted by the city. Section 922.10.D.2 parentheses C in parentheses, states that the Planning Commission should consider whether, quote, the proposed development shall create a favorable environmental, social, and economic impact on the city, unquote. This does not give the Planning Commission jurisdiction over union agreements or community benefit agreements. Rather, the Planning Commission may only consider the overall impact on the city. The Planning Commission should look to whether the development is a good fit into the city, not to whether the development gives a direct financial benefit to a segment of the community. The criteria for reviewing PDPs are more detailed than those for the MDPs. And Pittsburgh Code Section 922.10.E2 E2 which is attached to the letter as Exhibit B, requires that the Planning Commission consider existing retail facilities in residential areas, parking, pedestrian safety, access to public transportation, and traffic, preservation of historic structures, the scale and architectural treatment of the building in relation to the surrounding structures, microclimate effects in view corridors, open space requirements, compatibility with master plan or comprehensive plan, and for buildings with a footprint of 50,000 square feet or larger, the large footprint criteria in Pittsburgh Code section 922.04.E.6. Thus, the Planning Commission must consider only the context and effect of the development itself within the community. Regarding both MDPs and PDPs, the Planning Commission has jurisdiction over design review only. While community benefit agreements, union contracts, etc., could provide benefits to the community, they're simply not a part of what the Planning Commission may consider when reviewing MDPs and PDPs. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Please contact me with any questions. Very truly yours, Lawrence H. Baumiller, Assistant City Solicitor. And copies were sent to all <coughs> members of the commission. Uh, Madam Chair, I recommend that the uh, 
Mr. Baumiller's letter be made part of the record of this meeting, and I, uh, to that end, hand you this copy. 